Welcome back to watching Network Africa on Channel's television. Now, barely one week after the failed assassination attempt on the Burundian army chief, President Pierre Nkurunziza of Burundi is calling on the East African nation's military to stay united and not allow the incident to divide them. According to the military, three soldiers who were guarding General Prime Niongabo and two gunmen were killed when assailants attacked the general's convoy early on Friday morning, while six others were injured. The ambush follows a string of attacks on government and opposition figures over the past few months in Burundi, a country in turmoil since President Nkurunziza announced in April that he would seek a third term in office. Meanwhile, over 100,000 Burundians, which account for about 1% of the population, have fled the country and see no reason to return due to fear after violence that blew up after that controversial third-term bid. For more on an analysis on the situation in the country, we go live to London, where African news analyst Mr. Warwick Oyama is standing by. Mr. Oyama, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Cynthia. Now, I'd like to ask you, what are your thoughts on this latest assassination attempt? A number of things, really. I think um, it's, it's stepping up, isn't it? I mean, yes. this attack involved the use of um, uh, rocket-propelled grenades. Uh, that means that the attackers were, had access to army munitions. And it does raise the question that has been raised by other correspondents, whether the army isn't in itself fatally divided with some of the um, arm armaments being channeled to the rebels who are opposing Nkurunziza. So it's a potentially worrying situation. The nation could, uh, the army and the nation could divide along ethnic lines. And this is what everybody's afraid of. Now, in truth, but now we're talking about the sophistication, if that's the right term in this case, about, you know, it, it, when, we're when we're looking at rocket propelled grenades being used in this last one, who mm -hmm. do we, who should we be looking at? Or what direction should we be looking at in terms of who is responsible for these recurrent tit-for-tat attacks? You mean who's arming the people who are um, yes. mounting the attacks against the government? Yes. Um, that's an interesting one. As I said, I think that there is a possibility that armaments are coming to the opposition, or the rebels as they're called, from the armed forces itself, that is from the, um, the army that is in, supposed to be led by Nkurunziza, that there are elements within it that are opposed to his leadership and that are channeling arms to the opposition. That's one possibility. There's another possibility, and that is that arms are coming or being channeled from the country to the north of Burundi, which is Rwanda. And it's no secret that Paul Kagame, who is the uh, pr president of Rwanda, is no lover of Nkurunziza and would rather see him out. I thought was, that is actually the premise for my next question, because you did mention something about the Rwandan president earlier on when I spoke to you, but not being too pleased about what's going on in Burundi. Could you care to elaborate further? And now that you also, there is a, there's a possibility, based on your analysis, that he might also be supplying arms. It's a theory, because, yes. you see, otherwise, how are this rather disorganized rebel opposition group able to mount this kind of offensive right in the very heartland of government territory in Bujumbura? Um, they are re obviously receiving assistance. This is not just mm -hmm. a rebellion mounted by disconsolate and discontented troops based in exile. No, this is much more systematic. We know that Kagame, who is himself being seeking a third term, um, doesn't like Nkurunziza at all. He blames Nkurunziza as responsible for the rebellion that led to the civil war of 12 years that ended in 2005, in which over, well, well over a quarter of a million people were killed. So there's no love lost between them. Well, Mr. Oyema, thank you so much for your analysis. We'll be speaking to you again, hopefully much sooner than later. Thank you so much for joining us.
You're very welcome. This is a, let's keep watching this page. Yes, and I, hopefully it gets better. Thank you so much. Oh, I doubt that. Well, Mr. Warwick Oyema, speaking with us from London, he's an African news analyst. Just to, for the sake of hindsight, let's just take you through how these, how events have unfolded since the crisis in Burundi began in April of this year. We saw a lot of protests that, um, that happened particularly in the capital, Bujumbura. We also saw displacement of people, with the most recent being about 100,000, which accounts for about 1% of the total population. We also saw a lot of murders in terms of civilians and also prominent murders taking place. We've also seen a clear violation of the Constitution and the Arusha peace deal, which ended the 2005 civil war. There was also a failed coup attempt, which happened when President Tunkuriziza left the nation briefly. Then the elections took place, even though it was highly, the credibility was in question. They did hold and it was not observed by any international body. There have been six high-profile murders, and looking at what happened with the Army Chief of Staff, that brings the total to about two survivors, meaning that there have been eight um, attempts to commit assassinations, high-profile ones, but only six were successful. There, there have been two survivors. As we speak now, I believe that private media is still shut down and state media could still be running, but for more clarity on that let's go live to Bujumbura where Mr. Jean Regis and Duimana should be standing by and being told that we're trying to get him but for now let's just look at what's happening right here at home in Nigeria and much happier news I must say a picture they say is indeed worth a thousand words and for this reason a Nigerian artist that you're about to see in this next report has chosen to express himself on the canvas with numerous artworks representing icons who have certainly made a difference. Hunched over his drawing board, his brow knotted in concentration, Oscar Ukonu is putting the finishing touches to his latest piece, a portrait of U.S. President Barack Obama. The 22-year-old artist uses the ballpoint pen to draw portraits. What inspired me actually is my, my being able to, to, turn, to turn my frustration into something creative. Because I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I didn't have, I didn't have professional tools with me. So I think, I think it's a kind of, it, it inspired, what inspired me mostly is because I've seen some people do it too. People who, who don't have professional, artisans who don't have professional tools. But when they look around them and see something they can use, something that is available for them, they turn into greater, into greater works that people actually who have the professional tools who envy them. Oscar is not the first artist to choose the ballpoint pen as his primary medium. The art form has been around since the early 1940s. He discovered his love for drawing at a young age, but he developed his skill at using the ballpoint pen much later. As part of his creative process, he studies the image of a subject for at least two days before he is ready to take pen to paper. After getting the the, uh, the reference photo I want to use. I study it for about two days. So when I'm, when I'm studying it, I, if it's a musician, I got to listen to the music to get inspired, to get inspiration too, and, and get connected actually. So because it helps me to build, to build the artwork itself in my memory. So when I now draw, I have a finished piece of the work in my memory already, how it lives in blue, and yes. So now when I now take uh, the, 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 the the reference photo now will be a kind of bonus to help me in penning down what I have already in my head. Oscar's pieces are so detailed, they often resemble a digital image. From award-winning actor Morgan Freeman to renowned Nigerian writer Chinua Achebe, he's made portraits of some of his favorite global icons. Oscar is studying architecture, but says he would also like to make a career of his art. My parents now, they just believe art is not it for me. They want me to finish as an architect. And that was, that's a dream. So me, I just want to take it to a height that when I know that uh, this is my hobby, I turn it into what I want to live for. And then, then I, I find no other job. Oscar plans to hold his first solo exhibition next year.
And I thought I could draw. I've got nothing compared to what we just saw right there from Oscar. Job well done. Well, for now, here's our question of the day. We're asking you, what do you think the international community should do about the Burundi crisis? Feel free to send us your feedback either via email or Twitter. The address and handle are right there on your screen. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching Network Africa right here on Channels Television. I'm Cynthia Aaron.